everybody, Bandit here. Welcome back to the Bandit Flight Simmer channel. Big shout out to all my subscribers. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. Really appreciate you joining me on these videos. Uh, it really keeps me motivated to do more videos and especially my Flight Around the World series. If you like the type of content I do, make sure if you haven't subscribed to the channel so far, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoy the content, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. Today on the channel, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a simulated IFR local procedures trainer. Uh, if you're doing your instrument rating, this is quite common type of trip that you would do uh, where you just fly to a local airport and then uh, you basically just do instrument procedures at that airport. Today we're in a beautiful little place, Portland, Maine, on the east coast of the United States. And as you can see, we're in a different aircraft. We're in the Baron GA50, G58. And uh, we'll Hop in the cockpit here and we'll go over how we're going to get set up to do this little local trip. Okay, so we're here in the Baron and I've got it all set up on runway 11 in Portland, Maine, ready to go. This is not going to be a full tutorial on how to fly the Baron. I'm uh, just going to go over a couple unique features with the G1000 NXI that have uh, been implemented with the engine page here. But uh, essentially, uh, I'm just going to be doing a IFR procedures trainer in this aircraft. Just something a little different. I've been flying the Baron the uh, last little while. It's been a lot of fun, something different. And so to do a local procedures trainer, what I've been doing is on the flight plan, all I do is put in for departure, I put in the airport designation, KPWM for Portland. And the destination, I put in the same thing. So that way, if we want to select a departure or an approach, we can easily reference those based on these two airports being selected here. You don't need anything else in there in your flight plan uh, unless you need to uh, enter it in if ATC clears you to something, but uh, we'll deal with that as we go along. So right now all you need is uh, the airport in your departure, as your departure and for your destination. So that's set up. Uh, what I'll do is I'll load the departure. So we'll simulate that we're going to be cleared the uh, local Portland 6 departure and all that is is runway heading to 3000. So I got my runway heading set up, 3000 feet and uh, I can actually load that in and fly it in VNAV too. So we can go to the procedures page and I'll just get rid of this yoke here so we can hit these buttons okay. We'll select a departure and we'll just select the Portland 6 off runway 11 and those waypoints look good. Basically just runway heading, load and there we have it now in our uh, departure page. So that's ready to go. We can fly that uh, using the GPS if we want to. So, we'll simulate we've been cleared departure. We're gonna level off 3000, get radar vectors. I'm gonna request uh, to go on to an ILS approach and uh, we might have to throw a hold in there and then we'll come back around for an RNAV approach. So we'll see a few different procedures. I'll go through the uh, engine set up here for the uh, leaning the uh, engine on the uh, Baron. And uh, we'll do that en route to uh, for the approach shouldn't take very long so without further ado uh, I think we'll just do a quick uh, pre-takeoff check so fuels on both we got our mixtures rich props full uh, pitot heat is on landing lights are on uh, I got our heading 3000 set for our altitude and I think we're all ready to go so let's uh, give her some power release the parking brake give her some power and get up on our way so parking brake off that's the full power. Check temperatures and pressures are looking good. Airspeed's alive. Eighty knots. Rotate. Pause rate. Gears up. Speed is good. Flaps up. Just trim the aircraft up. And up through 400 feet. I'll get the autopilot on. Go flight level change. I'll climb at about 220. This airplane climbs pretty fast. And we'll select nav and then we'll just follow our departure here. Bring up the GPS page. And so it'll hit this manual sequence waypoint and then it's just going to continue on runway heading until we do something else. So there's manual sequence. And it's just going to continue on that heading of 110. 
And so we level off at 3,000. And then we'll... Bring the power back. Keep our speed at about 150. And I'll set about 20 inches on the uh, manifold pressure. And we'll level off and we'll let the speed slowly build up. And so let's say we check in with ATC at 3,000 feet on the uh, Portland 6. And he uh, says well, we're going to have a delay uh, of about 15, 20 minutes because there's inbound traffic. So he wants us to go direct to the Portland or Kennebunk VOR, which is Echo November Echo. And I already have that tuned in, my number 2 Navade, and I have the needle up. And he is going to say, you're clear direct to the Kennebunk VOR, maintain 3000, hold as published, expect for their clearance at uh, 2130. So I'm, I'm just going to switch the autopilot over to heading select, and I'll just heading select it. And we'll head towards that needle. So we got Kennebunk, uh, which is 11710, Echo November Echo is tuned and identified. And switch to heading mode and we'll turn towards that needle and then we'll just track it inbound and then we'll take a look at the hold so I'll bring the power back a little bit more Cast cloud here. So as I'm coming into the, uh, so I can suspend that uh, departure there. We're not using that anymore. I can switch the CDI over to VOR, and we can center our track bar. And then we can select nav, and then we can track the VOR to Kennebunk. So another thing I can do is I got my DME down here of 21 miles, so I can just use that. But if you want to use the actual DME, then you can go down to select DME here. And right now DME is on nav 1. We want to put it to nav 2, so we'll just select it to nav 2. And then we'll close that. And then we can go to, or get rid of that, sorry. And we can go to Pilot Options and we can display our DME over, over here for Nav2. This is just based on a GPS reference for that. So this is the actual uh, DME readout for that. Okay, so we're tracking inbound. And uh, we can go over real quick here. I'll just start slowing down. So talk about the engine pages here. We have... I went over this with the uh, DA-62 on my last flight, but here they're more appropriate for this aircraft. So when you select the engine, you have the lean and system. So system just gives you other information like fuel, uh, electrical loads, oil pressures, and stuff like that. But then you have this feature lean. And here you're going to see the exhaust gas te temperature for each cylinder, and you're going to see the carburetor uh, heat temperature for uh, each cylinder. So, if you want to lean this aircraft, what you're going to do is you're going to adjust your mixture to basically uh, set your optimal exhaust gas temperature. So you reduce your fuel flow. So they talk about uh, cruise for this aircraft. You're going to set your propeller RPM for 2300 RPM and your, they have different cruise, recommended cruise settings, 24 inches or a manifold pressure or 21 inches. So we'll, we'll use the 21 inches. So first we'll set our propeller RPM back to 2300. And I'll just slowly move these back till we get into the 2300 range. So we're pretty close. So that's pretty close to 2300 on both. And next you're going to uh, 
want to set your manifold pressure, we'll set it for 21 for cruise. So we'll put 21. And note our fuel flows are 10.5. So now in order to lean the mixture, we're going to use this. Uh, you can select your different cylinders if you want to show all the, all the different cylinder temperatures. But you want to uh, lean it based on the hottest cylinder temperature. So right now it's uh, set on one. So you can cycle through them. But we're going to use this assist. So assist automatically takes it to the hottest temperature. We note our exhaust gas temperatures are 1405 and what we're going to do is we are going to reduce our mixtures now until this temperature peaks so I'll do it with number one engine first I'll slowly bring back the mixture and you'll see it has a delta T up here so it's measuring the the temperature increase so the temperature is increasing increasing you keep bringing it back till it peaks 1440 1445, 1450, 60, 70, 80, 85, 90. And that's probably going to be the peak. So 1505 is the peak. So now in order to set this mixture properly, the POH for the Baron tells you to reduce your mixture till you peak and then go 25 degrees rich of peak. So that means we would increase the richness of the mixture. So 1510 is the peak. So we want to go until we get 25 degrees. So we go rich until it drops 25 degrees below that. So 1485. So that means that, and now you see our fuel flow has dropped from 10.5 down to 9.6. And we just do the same for the other engine. So we'll bring back this engine here. And it shows your delta T up here as it increases. So we're looking probably very similar. So we'll bring it back till it peaks. 1505. So 1505. So we'll bring that one back to 480. So we'll rich it up until it hits 1480. And there we go. Oh, a little bit back there. There we go. So that's pretty close. So now we're showing 9.6 gallons per side and we are 25 degrees rich of the peak temperature and that's how you lean your engines with your mixtures so that's uh, how you use that gauge and then you can go back to your regular engine gauge and you leave that in your cruise until you until you're ready to land and then you just go full rich and props full forward so we've got around 2300 rpm aside just just that one up a little touch 21 manifold pressure and we are mixtures are set for 25 rich of peak so that's how you lean the mixture on the Baron and it'll be similar to other aircraft and you have to look in the pilot operating handbook for each aircraft how it's going to work so now quickly we need to look at the hold so we're coming up to six miles back from Kennebunk and we need to look at the published hold so we're gonna have to do this hold manually so I'll just uh, the published hold is referenced on the chart here and I'll just show it to you real quick. So at Kennebunk, it's uh, basically an inbound of uh, 062 left-hand turns. And uh, so we're coming in from this direction. So it's going to be direct entry. So when we hit the fix, we're going to go outbound 082. And then we're going to go outbound for a minute and then turn inbound to track 062. So we're going to use heading mode for that. So that's going to be our publish hold. We're going to maintain 3,000. We got about uh, 13 minutes left to go for our expect further clearance. So we're coming up. We got about three and a half DME to go. Once we get close, I'm going to select heading mode and then I'm going to head and select it to an outbound track uh, or outbound heading of 082 for our uh, outbound turn to the left. And then we'll uh, do that for one minute. So I'm going to get my timer set up ready to go. So timer. So I'll cursor over to start and that's ready to go. I'm going to go, my heading is centered, I'm going to select heading select. And then when we cross over the station, so when the needle switches, flips around, or when we get the to from indication, go from to to from, we will uh, start our outbound turn to heading 082. So DME is coming up, got about a mile to go. 
you can see the VOR over here. So I'll just wait for the needle to switch by. And there we go. So we got two from. I'm going to do a left turn. And I'm just going to go to 082 for outbound heading. And now I'm going to change the course on my CDI to the inbound heading, which is 062 or 262. So I'll set that. And then you can see our outbound heading represents the reciprocal of the inbound. And so now we got to do the timings ourselves because we're just manually flying this hold here. Now I know you can do holds on the NXI, but you can't do them if you don't have them in your flight plan and you don't and you can't do them when you select a direct two. So uh, same thing on a missed approach. There's no holds in the missed approaches, so you have to manually fly most of the holds unless they're in your flight plan. So we're coming up. So we're going to start our outbound timing when we hit the heading or we go beam the fix. So as we go beam the fix here, I'll start my time. So right about now we're beam, start time, and then we'll go outbound. We'll check the wind. I'll put a, maybe a couple of degrees to the right because we do have a wind coming coming from this direction. So we're not quite going to have to go outbound for the full minute. You'll see that when we turn inbound because it's going to take us longer than a minute because of the tailwind we have right now. So so I can I can take a guess and say maybe 50 seconds because your hold should be based on your inbound timing. So if I go outbound 50, it should be close to maybe a minute inbound. So we can try that. Normally, you know, you just you can just go uh, your minute outbound and then come inbound, see what your timing is and adjust the timing outbound on the next leg. But I can already figure out that we got a little bit of a wind pushing us here, so we'll just go outbound. So 50 seconds, so I'll start to turn inbound. And I'll initially just keep that uh, intercept heading on. And then you start your time inbound when you're rolled out on the inbound heading or you cross the fix, whichever occurs first. So, so I'll get my timer ready to go again. So I'll reset it. So what we're going to use uh, to track inbound is we're going to use nav. And so I'm going to select nav. So the track is coming in. I'm going to select nav. And then it's going to capture the VOR. And it's going to track this inbound. So I don't have to use heading to track it inbound. And then when we cross the fix or we roll out on our inbound heading, I'm going to start the time. So there we're crossing the inbound track. So I'll start the time. And then we should be a minute inbound, hopefully. So now we're going to want to get set up for the approach and the hold. And the ILS 11 uh, does have a transition from the Kennebunk VOR. So we can start from here. But we need to get set up for the approach. So we'll uh, need to load the ILS. So maybe what I'll do is I'll ask ATC if we can do two minute timings just to give ourselves a bit more time to get it set up for the next inbound leg. So hopefully we can get clear for the approach. So how's our timing going? 36 seconds, 30 or 38, 9 seconds. And uh, we're just coming up here. So I'm going to get my heading bug centered because I'm going to have to go to heading select again when we cross the fix. So we're just getting over a minute coming up on the fix. And then we cross it, go ahead and select, and we'll go outbound of 082 or 0, pretty close to that anyway. 082, give it a degree. And so we were uh, like 10 seconds over, so I'd probably go outbound maybe 45 seconds on the next leg to keep that minute timing. So that's how you fly your hold manually. Uh, we'll ask ATC if we can do a two minute hold. 
So I'll go out for a minute and a half and then we'll see how that works for coming inbound for two minutes. And that'll give us a little bit of time to load up the approach to make a transition to the ILS. So we'll do that when we're coming back inbound or when we're outbound, we can load it up and then when we're inbound, we can activate the approach assuming we get cleared for the approach. So I'll stop that timing, reset it. So standard hold would be a minute, but sometimes uh, you can see how often you're having to do the turns here. Sometimes it's easier if you just do a DME hold like to 10 miles and turn around or you can request a two minute hold and then you're not having to turn as much, which is a lot, a lot easier, especially if you're going to be in a hold a long time. Okay, so start, oh, start our time. Just a little late on starting the time there as we go a beam. So I'll go outbound for a minute and 20 seconds since we're a little late in starting the time there. And so let's go over to the procedures page and we'll select the approach and we'll select the ILS 11 and we'll do it via uh, Echo November Echo, which is the Kinebug VOR. And then we'll put our barrel on and we will set our barrel mins of They're 270 feet. And then we will load the approach. Get the warning guidance is for monitoring the approach only. So that's loaded in there. So now check our timing. We've got another 20 seconds to go. So that's in our flight plan. Okay, so we're coming up. And there's a minute 20, so I'll start an inbound turn. Keep a bit of intercept heading on for now. Stop the timing. Reset it. And then we can uh, start tracking back inbound. Once we're tracking inbound, we'll uh, ask ATC if we can uh, start the approach now because we're coming up on our expected further clearance time. We're within five minutes, so we'll ask ATC if we can expect the approach fairly soon. And he says, yeah, you can expect, before you get back to uh, Kennebunk, you can expect uh, clearance for the ILS approach uh, via Kennebunk. Okay, so the track is coming in, so I'll just select nav again to track inbound. And we'll just see how our timing worked out. Should be about two minutes inbound. So we cross the inbound fix first. So right about now, so I'll start the time. And then what we can do is we're gonna expect to get clear of the approach. So I can go back to, so I'll zoom out here. You can see the approach is loaded in there, but it's loaded from our last waypoint. So I got to activate the approach and we're tracking inbound to E and E here. So if I go to procedure and I just select activate approach and then you can see now it's active. So as soon as we get cleared of the approach, I can switch over to, I can switch over to uh, GPS. So let's say he clears us to the approach via clear the ILS via Kennebunk port VOR, maintain 3000 until established on the approach. So I can switch my CDI up here to GPS and I'm going to now activate the nav on the GPS. And it's going to pick up our track to turn outbound from Kennebunk to the initial fix for the by the transition for the initial fix for the uh, ILS. So we didn't get our timing because we didn't make it all the way to the airport so I'll just stop that for now. Anyway, you get the idea on the on the uh, timings. So our track's coming in. So let's look at the approach real quick here. And we'll uh, just brief the approach and make sure we're all set up for it. 
So we're planning the ILS 11 via the Kennebunk transition. And I'm just going to bring up the chart here. So we're at Kennebunk down here. We're transitioning to here. And what you notice on this approach is a hold in lieu of a procedure turn. So it has a hold pattern in order for you to make the transition from there to the ILS. So basically what it's saying is you can go down to 2300 once you're on this transition and then you do the transition procedure turn or hold and lube procedure turn at Buxtow at 2300 as well and then you transition from there onto the ILS. So we're currently at 3000 and you can see a top of descent here as we come into Buxtow. So uh, what we can do is we can set 2300 for the procedure turn and or the hold and lieu of procedure turn and then we'll take a look at the entry for that and how that works out so basically what you do is you come in and you do a standard hold entry and then you fly the hold entry to arrive back at Buxtow and then continue inbound from Buxtow so coming in from here it's going to be a left turn it's going to be a parallel entry and then you go parallel outbound and then you would do a turn to left and then you come and fly an intercept back inbound to Buxtow and then you continue on the approach and then we can zoom in we can see that up here and then from there so we want to check our 1099 is our frequency we're going to cross the FAF at 1800 feet down to 276 I got 270 set that's close enough touch on zone elevation is 76 feet I should probably make that 280 and then climb the missed approach is climb to 600 then right turn 3000 back to the Kennebunk VOR so that's the approach so I think we're all set up ready to go so what I can do is we got the 2300 coded for the procedure turn or for the hold and loop procedure turn so I can put that in my altitude selector so 2300 and I can engage VNAV and then when I zoom in on the panel here we can see the hold entry so we come in we're going to go over a buck stow, then we're going to do a parallel entry outbound and then do a left hand turn on the protected side and come back and then do an intercept back to buck stow. so that's it seems to go a little bit wide here but that's okay there's protected airspace over here uh, for the for those holds because um, it's called a maneuvering airspace so so it is protected for altitude over here as well so so you just come in, you cross over the fix, you do a parallel turn outbound, parallel the track outbound, back inbound, left turn, and then re-intercept the track inbound at Buck's Toe, and then continue on with the ILS approach. So that looks like it's going to work out pretty good. So we got VNAV path, 3,000 feet we're at now. We got 2,300 entered for the procedure turn. Altimeter is set, and uh, yeah, so we'll just keep the speed, and we'll start configuring once we start inbound on the procedure turn. So, I got the traffic on here. You can still see traffic in the area. This is just uh, real world traffic, so there's a lot of real. So, we might cut somebody off here, but that's okay. We're not uh, really talking to ATC or it's not on BATSIM or anything. So, these are just simulated real world aircraft flying around. So, it's quite a few actually. Okay, so we hit the top of descent. We're starting our descent down to 2,300 feet. I'll bring the power back a little bit so we don't speed up too much. We'll try to stay in the green. Okay, so we're level at 2,300 feet. I'll keep the power where it is. Speed's good. And so we're just going to follow this procedure. Basically, it's a procedure turn entry or a hold entry as if you were doing a hold here. But you're not actually going to do the hold. You're just doing the entry to get up, set up for the inbound for the ILS. So that's looking pretty good there. Now, it's already loaded the ILS frequency, so it should auto-switch when we go past uh, Buxtow here. And it should, uh, when we arm the approach, it should automatically capture the localizer and be armed for the glide path. So, so that's set up. Well, I'm going to adjust my uh, reference altitude to 280, round it up. There we go. That's set. So we're starting the procedure turn outbound. Beautiful scenery here.
So let's talk about the missed approach. So I'm going to do the missed approach and we're going to get set up for another approach. There's an RNAV approach that starts at Kennebunk as well, so we'll just do the published missed approach. So let's climb to 600 feet, then right turn 3000, direct the uh, Kennebunk VOR and hold. But we're not going to hold, so we'll just fly to the VOR and then load up our next approach. So. So we'll do that in runway heading initially. So I'm going to have to set 3000. We'll set our heading of 110. And then once we go to above 600 feet, and then I have uh, the Kennebunk VOR tuned in NAV2, and I have the needle still up for that. So so that's there. So we can use that to track inbound to the Kennebunk VOR on the missed approach. Right now, they don't have the missed approaches loaded in uh, the NXI, but apparently that's coming in the next update, hopefully not too much longer. So. So then that'll be a nice feature because then if you have to do a misapproach, everything you need will be in the NXI already. That whole misapproach procedure, uh, tracking inbound to Kennebunk with the hold, that will all be there. So, so that'll be really handy. Okay, so we're coming inbound. We're going to do the intercept, come back inbound at Buxtow there. So... I think uh, to get ready for the approach here, I'm going to bring the props back up to full. I'm going to bring the mixtures back up to full. And I'll bring the manifold pressure down a little bit to about 15. I don't want to speed up too much. So the gear speed on this airplane is 152, and the initial flap speed is 152, and then the final flap is 122. So. I want to get below 150 for the uh, initial part of the approach here, so I'll just bring the power back a little bit, start slowing down. So we're coming inbound, so now I'm going to arm the approach. So you see localizer is armed and glide slope is armed. And hopefully when we go past Bucks, so it should make the automatic switch. So it did a pretty good job flying the uh, proceed the hold entry for the hold and louvre procedure turn here. Now we come up to Buxtow. And there we go. So it transitions to localizer. So localizer is captured. Glide slope is still armed. And we should see the glide slope coming in here. So speed is good. We're below 150. And... Yeah, that looks good. So when we capture the glide slope, then I'll lower the gear and get the approach flap in, and then we'll start uh, start the approach. So landing lights are on, pitot heat's on, fuel's on, props are full, mixture's full. Here comes our glide slope. So I'll get my heading set for 110 for the missed approach. Glide slope should capture here, so I'm going to get the gear and approach flaps. And there's glide slope capture. I'll bring the power back a little bit. And there we go. So glide slope's captured, so I'm going to set 3,000 feet for my missed approach altitude. And so localizer is captured, glide slope is captured. We have our MINS 280 set. Everything's looking pretty good. A little bit of cloud between us and the airport, not a big deal. We're going to be doing so for this approach. I would request uh, to fly the published missed approach, and then from Kennebunk, we'd like to set up for the RNAV approach. So, say ATC would just say, Roger, you're uh, in the event uh, on the missed approach, you're just going to be cleared, published missed approach. So published missed approach, as I said, was climb the 600 feet, then right turn 3000 direct to the Kennebunk VOR. So we're all set up for that. We have everything we need for that. There's the runway coming up there. So when I hit the missed approach point or the altitude, I'm going to go full power. I'm going to hit toga. What toga is initially going to do is just going to set a pitch attitude for climb, and it's just going to maintain a roll attitude for keep the wings level. 
and then I'll have to engage the modes I want for the misapproach, which will be initially heading mode, and then we'll uh, heading select it to make a turn, and then we'll uh, also select flight level change as well, and then we'll stay, start the turn towards the Kennebunk VOR. So coming up on a thousand feet, so everything looks good. I'll bring the speed back a little bit, so we're going to get ready to, if we're going to land, we're going to want to be below 122 for our land flap. 1,000 feet, so we've got our misapproach altitude is set. Heading is set for the misapproach. And looking good. So I got a button uh, on my joystick or my throttle map to for toga. So when I hit toga, which is simulated hitting this button here, you will get the pitch guidance for uh, for a missed approach. So see how that works out. So we're coming up on minimums there. You can see it coming up. So there's about a hundred above. There's minimums, so we'll simulate toga, full power, positive rate, gear is up, speed is good, flaps up. So we're still tracking the localizer, but we are in a pitch mode now. And so we've got a good climb going, so I'm going to switch now to flight level change. And I'll bring the speed back to 130 is good for now. And then I'll go heading select. Above 600 feet, we can now make a right turn to the Kennebunk VOR. So I'll just heading select it around to the VOR. So we're in heading mode, flight level change, climbing at 130 knots, full power, gear is up and flaps are up. And we'll leave the landing lights on. So post cuff check is complete. We'll just level off at 3,000 feet. And we'll keep our heading coming around to the head of the needle there. And then what I can do is I can switch my CDI now to NAV2 and I can center my course for Kennebunk and we can just hit NAV. There's 3,000 feet. I'll bring it back to about 20 inches. And I'm not going to lean the engines again because uh, we're just a short transit. So I just showed you that procedure there. It's available if you're doing a long cross country you see how much fuel it's going to reduce you by two gallons an hour uh, so it's important to lean the engines for the wear and tear on the engines but uh, also for the fuel savings so if you're doing a long cross country leg you definitely want to lean your engines but we're just going to keep them up uh, full prop and full uh, mixture for these approaches that's pretty common too you just don't go say there's an airplane going by there now okay and he shows up, there you go, you can see he's yellow on our TCAS because he's pretty close to us, so. Okay, so we're coming into uh, 15 miles back, so we'll get set up for the next approach. So we'll go over to here and we'll go to flight plan. And what you can do is you can get rid of this approach you can just hit that and then you select clear and you go remove it sorry clear enter and you can also remove the departure we don't need that anymore so we can clear enter and now we can go procedures and we can select another approach and so we're gonna do now the RNAV via Kennebunk there so we'll enter that and the only choice, because we have nothing else in the flight plan, the only choice is to activate it. We can't load it. So so let's say uh, we ask ATC uh, if we can expect the, we request the ILS, uh, or sorry, the RNAV 11 via Kennebunk. And he goes, Roger, uh, you're clear direct uh, Kennebunk, which we're already direct to now. Uh, maintain 3000, clear the ILS, or the RNAV uh, for runway 11 in Kennebunk. Or in Portland so uh, we can now activate that approach so we're clear for the approach I'll activate it you can see our track continues inbound to Kennebunk and uh, then it's going to make the transition over to the RNAV so 
what I'll do is I'll switch our CDI up to GPS now and you can see we get a warning here we're, we're not showing the VOR anymore so it goes to roll mode and that's fine so now we can just reselect nav and we're tracking the GPS now maintain 3000 and we'll just check the waypoints so those waypoints look pretty good after Kennebunk it goes to Ikka, uh, Buxtow, Mana, they, uh, they're all good they're all in the uh, flight plan so I'll show you the approach here for the RNAV so this is the RNAV we're coming in we're going to be coming in via Kennebunk and then from Kennebunk we can go down to 2600 feet and then from to this fix here Ipka, and then from there down 2300 feet to Buxtow, and then down to 1800 feet to Mena, and then from there we're going to pick up the uh, LPV gradient glide path of 3 degrees down to minimums. And the minimums are the same 276, so we'll leave 280 set. And that's our approach. Missed approach is going to be climb to 3000 straight ahead direct to uh, Sap, Sape, and uh, hold as publish. So we'll just, uh, now we can't set that up because that's an RNAV fix. We can't put a VOR, set a VOR up for that. So we'll show you how we can do that hold and then when we do the missed approach. So we're continuing into Kennebunk here. You can see there's a top of descent and you can see the next altitude, 2,600 feet. So in order to use VNAV for this approach, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, the altitude that we're going to intercept the glide path at, which is 1,800 feet. So I'm going to put that in. And then I'm going to activate VNAV, and you'll see VPath is armed. And then when we hit this inbound track here, we should descend to 2,600 feet. And then when we hit this next fix, we should go down to 2300 feet and then at Buxtow down to 1800 feet and then intercept the glide path. We'll arm the approach once we get past Buxtow there. So that's the approach. We got our minimum set. And there we go. So, coming up on the turn here. So, we're going to make a nice turn. We've got some more traffic up there. It's just 100 feet below us. There's another airport right there. While we're uh, in the turn here, let's just hop outside and have a look around. Yeah, beautiful scenery, nice sunset here. Okay, so we're making the inbound turn. Still getting those jaggies across the top of the screen here, I'm not sure. If anybody knows a fix for that, if you could leave that in the comments, I'd appreciate it. I'm running the latest NVIDIA drivers, and I don't know what's causing that. It's not consistent, it doesn't happen all the time, but... Okay, so now we're intercepting the first uh, transition leg for the uh, RNAV approach. That's from here, from Kennebunk, and we're going to start our descent down to uh, 2,600 feet once we hit the top of descent. So we're going to go from here down to 2,600 feet by the time we hit this Ipka waypoint. Okay, I'll start slowing down once we get uh, closer to Ipka here get below that 150 speed so we're ready to lower the gear so if you're doing instrument training at uh, whatever your local airport is this is a pretty common procedure you just take off and then you just do approach after approach, miss approach into another approach and get as many approaches as you can in, in, in a trip, like an hour, hour and a half trip. So, This is great because we have a lot of approaches that start from this Kennebunk uh, 
VOR. So it's a nice, easy way to transition, set yourself up for another approach. Okay, I'm going to start slowing down a little bit, bring it back to about 15. Still have our props full, mixture full. So I'm going to get rid of the Kennebunk VOR because the next missed approach doesn't rely on the VOR. So I'm just going to get rid of this needle because it could be distracting. So I'll go to the PDF options, I'll get rid of the needle and I'll get rid of the DME as well. And I could put up a needle for the GPS because we will reference the GPS in the next missed approach there. So there's VPath, we've intercepted the top of descent and we're going to descend down to that 2600 feet. Okay, so I'll go to uh, PFD options and I'll put GPS right now onto uh, the needle, just for reference. Okay, so we're leveling off 2600 feet. Bring the power back a little bit more. We're going to get below 150. And you can see VPath is armed again, and our next altitude is 2,300 feet. We have another top of descent, bottom of descent there. So that's looking pretty good for the VNAV portion. And then we should arm the approach. So I'm going to arm the approach now. And then you also see glide path is armed for the LPV approach. And then some point after Buxtow, we should transition hopefully to capturing the glide path. So the speed is good. Once we capture the glide path, I'm going to set my gear and flaps. And there's a lot of real world traffic at this airport. It's pretty busy. Okay, we're going down to 2300 on uh, the path. Captured that. Coming in over Buxtow. Going to turn inbound. Then VP path is armed again, and we're down to 1800 feet. So speed is good. So I'll configure here in a minute. So I think I'll just configure now actually. So we'll get the gear down. Approach flap. So gear is down, flaps are approach. Keep that out of the way. Landing light is line lights are on, pedo heat's on. And we're just waiting for the path to capture head down to eighteen hundred feet. Might catch the glide slope at the same time too, I'm not really sure. There's no V path, so we're just gonna start our descent. So a little bit more power off. And then prior to uh, mania, we should uh, capture the uh, glide path. So I'm going to get my panel lights on, floodlights, panel lights, because it's going to start getting dark here. I'll just turn these down a little bit. Okay, coming up on 1800 feet. And we capture the glide path, so that's good. So, I'm going to get my heading set up for the missed approach. 110 again. Uh, we'll get our altitude. 
the light path is captured so we can change the altitude. And I'm going to put 3,000 for the missed approach. So the missed approach is just climb straight ahead to 3,000 to uh, SAP A uh, fix. And we'll uh, load that in the GPS once we're on the missed approach. So, so basically I'll fly runway heading and then we'll uh, put that fix in. And then we'll come from there, we'll come back around for another uh, another approach. Okay, I'm going to start bleeding the speed off a little bit. There's a thousand feet, so check. We got our misapproach altitude set. Heading is set for the misapproach. Our minimums are set, so we're looking good to go. We got gear down, flaps are at approach, and landing lights are on. Speed off the speed a little bit more. I want to get down below 122. If I was going to land, I want to be able to be below my land flap speed. So 100 above. And there's minimums. So toga, full power, positive rate, gears up, speed is good, flaps up. And. I'm going to transition to flight level change, climb at about 130 knots, and I'll go ahead and select. So 3,000 feet, gear is up, flaps are up. 3,000 feet set, heading select set, flight level change. Dial that speed back a little bit more, 130. And we'll continue straight ahead. And so it's climb straight ahead to SAPP Eve. So we're going to go into direct two, and then we will put S. A. PP. Uh, S-A-P-P-E and we can hit enter and activate and there we go so there's a fix straight ahead we're basically on track there so I'll uh, switch to CDI where we're in heading mode so I'm gonna go to nav mode and bring some power back because we're getting too fast here Okay, so we're now our GPS tracking, altitude hold, autopilot still engage, set uh, 20 manifold pressure, and get the speed back down, and yeah, we'll continue off to uh, this fix. Now the missed approach says uh, fly to SAPE and then hold is published, so it's basically uh, inbound 290 right hand turns. So the entry for this would be a uh, parallel entry. So we'd fly outbound and then do a left turn and then re-intercept inbound and then come back like that. So in order to do that, because we don't have the missed approach and I can't add a hold if I'm flying direct to a fix here because it's not in our flight plan. So this is where OBS mode will come in handy. So, so what I'm going to do is when we get close to the fix, so we're still five miles away, I'm going to put it in OBS mode and then I'm going to fly outbound of 110 and then we will set our OBS course inbound of 290. So we can start doing that now. So I'll put it in heading select. So we'll heading select it. 
I'll go OBS mode and then I will put our course of 290 in OBS. So that's our inbound track. So we're going to track this outbound on a parallel entry once we hit the fix. So that's we got our needle up there, so that's good. It shows our DME. And then we'll go outbound for one minute. So we'll get our timer set up here. So that's ready to go. So we'll just use when the needle swings through uh, 90 degrees, we'll start that as our timer. And then we'll just fly this track outbound. You can see we got a little bit of a crosswind there. So we'll get ready to start our time. So there we go, we'll fly outbound for a minute. Stay on this heading, fly the track outbound and then we'll do... So we're going to fly the track outbound and then the parallel entry will be a left turn and then we'll fly an intercept back, get back on this track and then we'll just do the hold after that. So that's how you do the hold with OBS mode on the GPS because there's that's a fix there's no VOR there there's no radio nav aid to use so so that's how you can make use of OBS mode to fly a hold when you don't have it set up in your flight plan and we can't set it up in our flight plan because I, I tried it I tried to put uh, a fix in the flight plan just just that fix like if I go to flight plan and I just went to the next spot here and I put in SAPPE and then tried to put a hold but it wouldn't work so it has to be a full flight plan for some reason in order to put a hold in after it. I, I'm, I'm not sure what the requirements are of that, but anyway. So we're coming up on a minute, so I'm going to go to heading select. We're still in heading select, sorry. I'm going to do a left-hand turn. And we'll stop our time. And reset it. So we're going to come left hand turn and then I'm going to fly an intercept track to, or intercept heading to come back on the track and then track it inbound. And then we'll be, that'll be our hold entry. So I'll keep the heading coming around. Put it on a 30 degree intercept there. So I'll start the timing when we're on our intercept. That's a rough gauge for we're going to be going into a little bit of a headwind here. That'll give us a rough idea of our if we have to make any adjustments to our outbound timing there. So Pull out on the heading, start the time, and just with that wind I'm going to give it another 10 degrees intercept. So there's our track coming in. And then when we hit the fix, I'm just going to make a right hand turn outbound 110 to start our outbound leg. So get the heading. So we're up over a minute, so I think I'm only going to do about 45 seconds outbound because we got the tailwind. So. so we're just coming up over the fix and turn to heading 110.
right hand turn. And we'll reset our timer. And then when we're outbound to beam the fix, we'll start our time. We'll do about 45 seconds and that should give us about a minute inbound. Hopefully. It's getting nice and dark here now. So what we're going to do is from when we're inbound, we're going to transition to a, uh, another approach. So we're going to load up, uh, the, we're going to do the same RNF approach, except this time we're going to uh, do it by Buxto initial approach fix. So we'll just come in and we'll do this hold and louver procedure turn via Buxto. So we'll, we'll come straight into Buxto. And then we'll do a hold entry, hold and louver procedure turn. So we'll basically do the same thing. We'll do a parallel entry and then we'll come back in and then we'll come in, in on the RNAV approach. So same approach as last time, just a different entry this time using the hold and louver procedure turn. So once we're inbound, we'll set that up. So we'll start our time. So we go beam the fix there. That's well, about five seconds late. So I'll do it for about 40 seconds. Okay, there's our time coming up. So 40 seconds, so I'll turn inbound. Keep a little intercept there. And then when we're going inbound, we can actually engage nav to track that inbound, just like we did on the VOR. And again, I'll reset my time. There's our core starting to come in. So what I'll do is I'll activate NAV and then it'll activate GPS. And then when we cross the fix or cross the inbound track, we will start our time. Let's see how close to a minute we are. Okay, I say we're just crossing the fix, so we'll start our time and continue inbound. So now we can get the approach set up for the next uh, approach. So we go to procedure and we don't want to activate approach, we want to select an approach. We want the RNAV 11 again. This time we want it by the uh, Buxto. Enter. This has a course reversal at Buxto. Yes, we'll accept that. And the barrels are set, and we can just activate once we get cleared for the approach. So, let's say we ask ATC if we can do another approach, uh, RNAV approach via Buxto, and he says, Roger. Uh, after uh, passing Shape or Sape, you're cleared direct Buxto for the RNAV uh, runway 11 via Buxto. So that's looking pretty good. Our time is pretty close to a minute. Just center my heading bug. So we'll just keep on that track. So yeah, it was pretty close, just pretty close to a minute there. So we'll activate that now. And then we'll pick up the track to Buxto. So it's not quite centered for some reason. So I can uh, just select that and go direct to and then we get back on our direct two track there so get rid of this timer we don't need that anymore so now we're headed to Buxto about 20 miles to go and uh, that looks good we'll keep the power where we are so I'll just check those 
waypoints there. So we have Buxto, we have the Hold, then uh, Mania, Mana, and then Finis and the Runway. So that's looking good. So if I range out, you can see that we have at Buxto we have the approach. First of all, we have to take it out of OBS mode. There we go. That's why the Direct 2 was kind of messy because we were still in OBS mode. So let's select Direct 2 again. Oh, flight plan, cursor, direct two, enter, enter. So we're, there we go. So that's a common mistake. Don't forget to take it out of OBS mode when you're done in OBS because it's not going, even though we activated the approach, it's still, it's now using Buxto as an OBS fix. So that's uh, not what you want. So now you can see the procedure turn is set in there. So now we're tracking GPS, L2-3000. You can see 2300. That's our procedure turn altitude again. Same as last time. So we have a top of descent right here and then bottom of descent. So what we can do is we can go back to VNAV so we can set 2300 feet. And we can activate VNAV again and then we're ready to descend to 2300 feet for the procedure turn. Okay, we still got five minutes to Buxto, so I'll check in with you when we get to Buxto, and uh, we'll go through the approach, and then we'll land. See you in a few minutes. Hey, we're back. We're just coming up to Buxto, and we have uh, started our VNAV descent to 2,300 feet. So BP path is active, and we're going to hit 2,300 feet of Buxto, and then do the procedure turn. So it's going to be a parallel entry. So we just parallel the track outbound, and we're going to make a left turn, and then re-intercept Buxto will come back inbound and then complete the approach from there. So we have our minimum set. Our landing lights are on. Uh, props are full, mixtures are full, pedo heat's on. Gas is still good. Still got lots of fuel. And uh, I'm going to level off at 2300 feet. I'm going to bring back about 15 manifold, inches of manifold pressure, and we'll start bleeding that speed off get back below 150. So we're starting the procedure turn, the reversal, or the uh, hold entry for the reversal here. I'm not used to these holds in lieu of a procedure turn. It's kind of a new thing for me. Okay, so we'll just follow that around. While we're doing that, I'm just going to show you something real cool. This is a uh, a program called uh, Volanta and uh, you can use this to track your flights and you can see we took off we flew down to Kennebunk we did the hold down there and then we transitioned to the ILS that was our first uh, hold and louver procedure turn coming in for the ILS missed approach we did a hold out here and then now we're tracking back out for the uh, next approach so it's kind of neat uh, way to see a uh, three-dimensional picture you can see this even shows the altitude it's kind of cool and uh, it automatically connects to the sim you can download it's a little app and it's called uh, Volanta here and then uh, you can use that to uh, track your flight so it's kind of cool anyway starting to turn inbound there speed is good
Okay, I'll put my heading on uh, 110 again for the missed approach. Where these procedure turns are really useful and where this hold and louver procedure turn will be really useful is if you have to lose a lot of altitude prior to getting established. So if you're coming into an uncontrolled airport and you have terrain around the airport, you might have to maintain like seven, eight thousand feet till you hit this fix and then you you know, you need to get established at down to like three thousand feet or twenty three hundred feet inbound to uh, start the approach. So this is a great time to lose the altitude that you need to get established on the approach so that's the most common time of uh, when you'd want to fly a full procedure turn or in this case hold and louver procedure turn okay so we're intercepting back inbound and then we're going to maintain that 2300 feet actually we can go to 1800 feet once we're past Buxtow so I will put in 1800 feet And I'll just uh, engage VNAV again, just so when we get by the 2300 feet, we should descend down to 1800 feet, which is the uh, where we're going to intercept the glide path at, like we did last time at Mana. Mania. So we're starting to turn inbound. Once we cross the fix, we should see the next altitude, 1800, pop up. There it is. And once we hit the top of descent for that, we will start the descent down there. I'll bring the power back a little bit more. We'll get the speed back so we can get the gear down shortly. There's the runway up ahead. And on this one, we'll just make a landing for a full stop. So you see how much training you can get in when you do these local flights and you stay close to the airport. I mean, by the time we're done here, we're probably just going to be maybe an hour and 15 minutes. And and uh, we're going to get three approaches in. We're going to get a couple holds in, a bunch of missed approaches. So it's... It's very typical of doing an instrument procedures trainer at a local airport. Okay, a path is coming down, going down to 1800 feet. I'm going to get the gear down and flaps at approach now. And then we'll intercept the glide path as we get to uh, Mena here. We need to arm the approach first. Their glide path is armed. Got our minimum set, 280 feet. Okay, level off, glide path is captured. And I'm going to bring the power back a little bit. We want to be slowing down. Okay, so the glide path is captured, so I can throw in our missed approach altitude of 3,000 feet. Got our heading set, so it would be the same missed approach, would be climbing ahead, straight ahead, 3,000 feet, direct uh, SAPE there. So heading is 110 set, and 3,000 feet is set for the missed approach. Bring the power back a little bit more, we're going to want to be below 122, so when we get to minimums we can select land flap and then final approach speed for this or uh, threshold crossing was about 98 knots so when you select that land flap it really bleeds the speed off quickly so so we'll just do a quick uh, pre-landing gear is down flaps are at approach landing lights are 
on and pedo heats on fuel set props are full mixture is rich okay there's a thousand feet we'll check our mr poach altitude is set our runway heading is 110 set and i'll start bringing the power back a little bit more start beating that speed off Okay, we're good for, there's a good speed for land flap anytime. So I'll select land flap now. Add a little bit of power so the speed doesn't bleed off too much. 100 above. And there's minimums. Autopilot's off. Speed is good. Get any slower than that. Rush on the threshold. Whoops, very pitchy. Power is back. Ooh, man, I gotta adjust the pitch settings on this aircraft for the joystick. Very pitchy. Okay, touchdown. <laughs> Just bring it to a stop on the runway here. Parking brake set. So there we go. That was a nice uh, quick little intro to the Baron Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, I'll just uh, tell you that the this is the stock Baron. I haven't. There's no mods for this aircraft that I've used. I do have the NXI mod on for the uh, Garmin G1000 system. So we've been using that for the last little while, so that's been the same. And uh, other than that, there's no mods for the Baron. I, uh, I've only flown it a couple of times. I noticed it's really pitchy for me there on the joystick, so I might have to go in and adjust the sensitivities for this aircraft on the pitch. Other than that, it's been a lot of fun flying this airplane. You saw the uh, engine performance features, so that's how you uh, use that page now for the uh, trim or for the uh, mixture settings on the uh, Baron. As I said on the Diamond, because it's a FADEX system, those pages aren't applicable, but they're very useful on this aircraft. So got to see that. We got to see some uh, flying some missed approaches, some holds. Uh, it was a pretty good trip. We saw a lot of stuff. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, next time we're going to try to do our next uh, leg in our uh, Around the World series. I was going to do it today, but uh, the weather wasn't very good in the Gulf of Tonkin there. We're going to fly up the coast of Vietnam and it uh, wasn't very good, a lot of heavy rain and we weren't going to see much scenery so it wasn't worth doing today. So I decided to do this trip instead. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's content. If you did enjoy it, uh, hit the like button, I uh, really appreciate it. If you're not a subscriber to the channel, please subscribe if you like the type of content uh, that you saw today. I do a lot of trips like this. I do a Around the World series and a Diamond DA62 and uh, other tutorials. So. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and uh, follow the notifications if you uh, want to see more videos like this. Appreciate you joining me today. It was a great flight. I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time. Bandit out.